The Federal Housing Finance Agency is under pressure to help struggling homeowners. Opponents argue that principal reductions will increase liability for taxpayers, obviously raise the cost of credit. Rick joins us with a special guest this morning in the Santelli Exchange, and that is Senator Bob Corker. Rick? Well, welcome, Senator Corker. I'm, I'm glad to have you, especially considering that you sit on a committee that really is going to continue to monitor and look at the FHFA. And my first question to yeah. you is, Ed DeMarco, as the conservator of the GSEs, what's his legal role? Uh, his role is uh, to preserve taxpayer assets, to make sure that taxpayers' uh, money is not wasted, and he's done a good job of that as the conservator. He's not running the organizations. He's trying to conserve taxpayer resources. All right, there's a lot of pressure on him. There was an op-ed in the Journal in October that did call him the public enemy, and there's a lot of Democrats trying to pressure him to do some of these debt forgiveness programs. One of his comments was that he doesn't see that within his mandate, and if they want him to do something like that, and he doesn't think it'll be profitable, they need to procure him some money. And you know what their answer was? And you probably do. Hey, there's some extra TARP money. Is that substituting right. one slush fund to create another? Yeah, so first of all, I think the first lesson with this, Rick, is you should never let the federal government, federal officials, control organizations like Fannie and Freddie. So, you know, the first thing is organizations like this should not exist for officials to be able to use them as playthings, and that's what's happening right now. The Treasury is in way over their head. They've got about $20 billion that, in essence, is burning a hole in their pocket. It's leftover TARP money that ought to be used to reduce our deficits. Instead, what they're doing during this election year is basically forcing Ed DeMarco into a box. He's already shown that if you do principal reductions within FHFA, it's going to cost the taxpayer money because 9 out of 10 homeowners are actually making payments like Americans do on time. Three out of four mortgages that are underwater are actually making payments on time like Americans do. And so he's shown that if we try to do principal reductions, what it's going to do is create a moral hazard where people will begin to do what's called strategic defaults. They'll say, well, look, if the government's going to reduce my principal, I'll just quit making payments and I'll have lesser of a mortgage. So he calculated that this moral hazard was going to cost the taxpayers money. So Treasury said, well, Maybe it will, but what we're going to do is we're going to take money out of another pot. It's taxpayer money, obviously. We're going to take money out of another pot and give you $20 billion. And therefore, as the conservator of these organizations, you cannot say that within these organizations you're doing something that's costing the taxpayer money. Um, this is the kind of thing, uh, Rick, that we've seen going on all over and over and over, and it, it's going to lead us to a place we do not want to be. I, I think it's reprehensible, and I hope if he's forced to do this, he'll do it in a way that does not create moral hazard. I agree. And you know, the president today is on his spring tour, and I see a lot of similarities with what's going on with the student loan program and the government being in control of those loans via Sally May. Uh, do you have any comments about the similarities there? It seems as though if you want to get elected, you have to give something away because the tough love solutions don't get you necessarily a lot of electoral positives, but they are solutions versus throwing money at a problem. Yeah, I think uh, without being specific on the student loan issue, which we're delving into in detail right now, I would say that what we have right now is a vision of two Americas. One is that you can have your cake and eat it too. We can continue to go down this path of politicians uh, giving citizens what they wish with other taxpayer money in order to make themselves popular. Or we can do those things that we all know have to be done for this nation to be made great. We're watching the movie play out right now in Europe uh, when that was not adhered to. We know that that's not the path for our country. The Treasury Department during this election year is obviously forcing money out, uh, doing things that we know probably are not going to be in our country's best interest, or I would say I know are not in our country's best interest. And I just hate to see this playing out. We're continuing to, to move our society in a direction that to me is not the place we want to go, and the government is incenting that to happen. Well, Senator, I really appreciate you coming on today, and I know you have another hearing later about MF Global, and maybe after that hearing you'll come back later in the week because many traders down here would like to see some action in that regard as well. 
Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Carl, would Thank you like you. to talk to the senator? I just want to say hi. Uh, senator, good to see you as always. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. You. And thanks to you, Rick, as well.